the content of the dish will be uh, warm up and uh, heating up and will be melted when the boiling point uh, has been reached further heating generates steam without any increase in temperature this heat gained by the steam is termed as latent heat of operation uh, the first was uh, we have termed that is the sensible heat before the boiling point reach and the uh, case after the boiling point reach after the boiling point reaching further heating will produce steam and the temperature will be not increased uh, and this heat gain is from the latent heat up operation and uh, this uh, latent heat up operation is used to change the water that is in the liquid state from the liquid into the vapor state at constant temperature if the temperature is uh, kept constant uh, then the liquid state water is converted into the vapor state the steam produces uh, rises in this case the steam produces after the boiling point of the water reach and the steam is uh, water liquid is converted into the vapor that is steam and uh, the steam produces rises and contacts the dish wall and this uh, dish wall in the figure for number one you can see uh, then it is in coincidence with the dish wall after the generation of the steam that steam in touch with the dish wall which initially is at room temperature and the steam condenses on the cool outer surface of the dish and doing so gives up the latent heat it contains forming a layer of condensate on the dish which runs down over the surface and drops back into the bar fresh condensate is uh, continuously formed to take its place so that a layer of condensate will always be present the latent heat that is liberated passes by conduction to the wall of the dish and into the content to be heated the wall of the dish is the solid content and uh, the heat transfer by the process of conduction will definitely depend upon the different factors uh, like the dish wall, the length of the dish and heat is then transferred to the fluid or the content uh, within the particular dish after crossing the dish wall by natural convection and conduction. The steam function uh, is a heat transfer agent whereas the heat from the gas burner is transferred by the liberation of the latent heat into the liquid and the dish. Now what are the advantages of the uh, this type of the indirect heat because heat is not directly supplied and uh, the heat is supplied through the water bath and uh, the water is converted into the liquid after the melting point uh, after the uh, boiling point reach and it the liquid water is converted into the steam and uh, the steam is further crossing the barrier that is the dish wall and uh, then again and directly heat up the contents uh, in the dish. There are several advantages of this indirect heat. The first one is the temperature can never exceed 100 degrees centigrade at atmospheric pressure. Remember that at atmospheric pressure the temperature will be never exceed 100 degrees centigrade. The second advantage is uh, less chance of localized overheating of the contents in the dish because uh, the indirect way uh, will never allow to localize overheating. And the third one is the steam circulates over the whole dish surface. Uh, you can see uh, then the steam, in this case, the steam will be. Uh, not targeted in any particular area, it will be circulated over the, this uh, this area exposed to the steam. And uh, in this case, the steam circulates over the whole dish surface. Heating is much more uniform. Uniform heating is provided by this way. Then it would be if the dish were heated directly over the gas plate. So these are some of the advantages of uh, this indirect heat by using the laboratory water pump. Consider 
to rotate into a vertical position if we rotate this into a vertical position this particular area that is uh, encircled and uh, then straight slightly it should appear in the figure 2 on the right side you can see uh, that uh, particular schematic diagram of that uh, vertical position and if we rotate this one uh, this area in which we uh, have the particular steam and the dish wall and the contents of the material and the condensate which is surrounded and freshly the uh, condensate will be uh, replaced by the uh, older one and in this case you can see uh, the diagram are differently are the particular areas you can see on this so that is the steam and uh, condensate layer after the uh, steam generation that is coincides with the dish wall and condensate will be uh, a layer of condensate will be present and uh, after that a dish wall and uh, then the boundary layer between the dish and the liquid content uh, and the boundary layer after the boundary layer and the liquid content you can see in that particular dish if we enlarge and uh, vertical rotate uh, vertical position and shape it slightly uh, and uh, this diagram is uh, if you understand this one uh, then you can easily uh, prepare this one that uh, after steam the condensate layer and dish wall and uh, boundary layer between the liquid and the dish and uh, again inside one that is the liquid A temperature drop occurs from the temperature of the condensing steam to the lower temperature of the liquid in the dish. If this liquid is assumed to be a lower boiling point than water, then eventually it will boil at this lower constant temperature because of the low melting point it will boil. And the temperature gradient should be appear as in figure 2. You can see in figure 2 that is the first one that is the temperature of the steam and that is uh, T naught and it is uh, boundary layers and T1 and TL uh, we will discuss that what is meant by the TH and what is meant by the uh, TL, T naught and T Y. TS in this case the TS on the left side you can see that is the TS if you have remembered this one that is the temperature of the uh, steam the TS temperature of the steam and uh, then after TS you can see that is the T naught that is uh, TS the temperature of the steam and uh, the T naught and the second one that is the uh, temperature of the inner surfaces of the uh, dish TS uh, denotes the uh, steam temperature, TL is the temperature of the boiling liquid, liquid that is boiled in that particular dish and T naught and T i for the temperature of the outer and inner surface uh, that is the outer surface of the dish and uh, T i that is the inner surface of the dish. There are uh, three different, uh, four different, sorry, two, four different temperature. First one is TS, T naught, TI, and TL. TS the temperature of the steam, TI of the outer surface, and TI the inner surface of the dish, and TL is the temperature of the liquid. Our temperature difference or temperature gradients is there. Now it is important to know or control the rate of heat transfer. In many pharmaceutical processes, it is important to know or control the rate. Uh, rate is uh, related with the time. At a unit time, how much? 
transfer of heat will be there uh, and uh, that is termed as rate of heat transfer it is uh, very much important to know about the rate uh, at which the heat can be transferred and uh, rate of heat transfer means that the quantity of heat transferred and unit time this must be carefully distinguished from the total quantity of heat that needs to be supplied total quantity of heat that needs to be supplied is something else and the rate of heat transfer is something else consider heating a beaker of water using a bunsen burner flame under a low flame if we supply a low flame it might take 20 minutes to boil whereas using a full flame if we increase the intensity of the flame it may only take only 5 minutes the rates of the heat transfer will be in definitely increased because the at full flame it will take uh, less time but at low flame it will take longer time initially we will consider the factor that affect heat transfer through a single layer of material in this case when the example of the laboratory water bath in this case the heat transfer through a single layer of material and the material in this case is dish water now we will discuss the one of the law that is fourier law uh, that is a uh, conduction is governed by a law that is fourier law which states that the rate of conduction is proportional to the area measured normal to the direction of heat flow and to the temperature gradient in the direction of heat flow that is the statement of the fourier law it means that the rate of conduction is proportional to the area so if we increase the area then the rate of conduction will be more and uh, the temperature gradient and the direction of heat flow the rate of heat transfer means the quantity of heat transferred that is designated by capital Q and uh, units used are joules and unit time that is uh, t second small t is used for the time while capital T is used for the temperature the rate of heat transfer that is the quantity of heat transferred in unit time will therefore depend upon the difference in temperature that is delta T or T naught minus T1 uh, in this case uh, that we have studied that is uh, T naught and T1 the inner and the outer surface of the outer surfaces of the dish the driving force for the heat transfer process is the temperature gradient or difference in temperature the dish thickness in this case LD that is uh, the area available for heat transfer is also one of the factors that is designated by capital A these are the different factors which affect the rate of heat transfer and we will consider these factors that is the quantity of heat transfer the time and then uh, these depend upon the rate of heat transfer will depend upon the temperature gradient the wall of the dish the thickness of the dish and uh, area available for heat transfer the proportionality constraint that is termed as thermal conductivity of a material and it is uh, denoted by the symbol capital K and in this case KD in the case of the thermal conductivity of the dish and uh, thermal conductivity values gives us indication of the ability of the material to conduct heat the higher the value of the K that is thermal conductivity the more easily heat will be conducted combining all these factors 
we had gave q by t the rate of heat transfer that is equal to kda uh, that is the professional electric constant of the dash kd is the area t naught and t one is the temperature difference of the inner and outer surface of the dish LD is the thickness of the dish uh, these uh, factors after combining uh, in the form of this equation that is the rate of heat transfer designated by Q by T indicate that to increase the heat transfer rate that is conduct heat more quickly through a layer of material to the value of value of A capital A delta T or KD may be increased or the value of L that may be decreased. In both cases if we increase the value of KD that is the thermal conductivity that is good conductor and the area exposed is more and the temperature difference that is T0 minus T1 uh, if it is increased then uh, this result is increased then in this case the rate of heat, uh, heat transfer will be increased and the second case is if the thickness of the dish or the thickness of the material by which the heat is transferred by the process of conduction if it is decreased, then the rate of heat transfer will be increased. SI units of the thermal conductivity, which is designated by the capital K, in this case capital KD, uh, is uh, watt per meter Kelvin. Abbreviated as W by M capital K. Watt per meter Kelvin. This is the SI units of the thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity values shows that the metals are the best conductor followed by non-metallic solid, liquid and gases. It should be noted that the K values that is the thermal conductivity values will vary with temperature and also with the composition of the material. For example from 13 to 19 watt per meter Kelvin in the case of stainless steel. And there are different other materials having the uh, different uh, thermal conductivity values uh, designated in the uh, SI units. So copper, pair of copper having 386 watt per meter Kelvin, while the pair of aluminium 204, mild steel that is 43, stainless steel typical that is 17, and glass 586. Water at 20 degrees centigrade, thermal conductivity value is 0.6 and water at 80 degrees centigrade, a value of thermal conductivity is 0.67 and boiler scale 0.092-0.3 and glass wool insulation 0.04 and air 0.03 watt per meter Kelvin. These are the different uh, material and uh, the thermal conductivity values of these uh, material during the which are used during the pharmaceutical processing. For reference you can construct Halton Pharmaceutics the science of dosage form design second edition pages consulted over uh, in this Pharmaceutics, Science and Dosage Farm Design, 2nd edition book, 588 to 589. Thank you all for your attention and we will discuss uh, this topic in the online live session through the Google Meet session as per the prescribed timetable. Thank you all. Let's overview the today uh, lecture. Heat transfer by conduction.
by coordination of using the example of the body water bath for your uh, conduction explanation thermal conductivity and we have studied the sensible heat and the uh, Liberty water bath and content in the dish we have explained this figure by using the gas burner the water and then uh, before going to uh, reach the boiling point the temperature that is a sensible heat and after the boiling point reach uh, the water and liquid is converted into steam and uh, in this case the latent heat of evaporation is gained by the steam and uh, which is responsible for changing the water from the liquid and to the vapor at constant temperature the condensate preparation advantages of indirect heat different reason and advantages the temperature does not exceed at 100 degrees centigrade uh, and the uh, atmospheric pressure less chance of localized overheating some materials are deteriorated by the localized water heating and we will prefer the indirect way of heating in order to minimize the risk of localized water heating and the third one is uniformly heat is provided because of the steam circulation over the whole dish surface compared to the direct flame application of heat transfer method and we also explained the different areas of steam exposed to that particular dish wall and uh, the internal side layer is over there uh, stick toward the uh, dish wall after the dish wall and the boundary layer and the liquid content and the dish the different factors, temperature gradient and the uh, importance of knowing about the rate of heat transfer controlling the rate of heat transfer Fourier law explanation equation, thermal conductivity the definition of thermal conductivity, the importance SI units and the different materials encountered during pharmaceutical processing and their thermal conductivity value uh, this topic is already uploaded in the handout format and detail format on the portal you can download the handout material for painting and uh, preparation as well as the detail one and you can also consult the book and the reference book consulted for this purpose that is also mentioned at the end that is Art and Pharmaceutics the Science of Dosage from Design 2nd edition that is concerted over there as 588 to 589 and already uploaded on the portal Thank you all for your attention.